There's been so much talk about using artificial intelligence to create artwork, poetry, music lyrics, books, courses, art. And within our community, I can see some people getting angry, some people feeling worried, some people feel excited. And I thought it would be really good to just talk about it in today's episode and talk about the different ways that artificial intelligence is being used and how it affects us and how it's going to affect us going forwards and what I feel about it. So it feels like this just hit us a couple of months ago. I mean, it must have been bubbling under the surface. And I, you know, I've heard stories about the metaverse and all the things going on behind the scenes to create a more digital world and a more virtual world. But, you know, in the last couple of months, it's just like, boom, here's AI. And it's, uh, it's going to change things dramatically. It already has changed things dramatically. And we will see big changes now over the next year, three years in the whole world, in the legal system, in the education system, in the art world. It's just, it's going to change everything. And it raises a lot of questions. It's raising a lot of debates, especially around copyright and who owns things and education now having to change. And there's lots of conversation around education is dated and it needs to move forwards. And so there is a lot, it's a hot topic, isn't it, at the moment? And I find it really fascinating and really interesting, and especially in how it triggers people or makes people react in different ways. And that's what I want to talk about today. And so I'm not an AI expert. <laughs> I know very little about it. Um, what I do know is that, and I'll, I'll just talk about it in the basics in case anyone here is listening and just has no clue what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, and so AI is artificial intelligence and it's using kind of programming and computer and science to create and it uses algorithms and data that already exists and rhythms and you know it's kind of it's technical you know to create this yourself you'd have to be a programmer but there are tools now i i think of it like websites um like back in the day if you wanted to create a website you would have to learn code and javascript and all those programming languages and that's what i believe AI is a little bit like you you would learn the code and you can create something using code. But today, um, if you want to create a website without code, there are builders that you can drag and drop and quickly move things around and all the code is happening in the background. And that's a little bit what AI is like in that it's, it's very technical in the background, but there are now tools that make this accessible to all of us to just type in. So ChatGPT is a tool that is for copy written words where you can just type in any question and it will give you answers. It will write poetry, it will write text, it will write lessons. You know, you can literally use it to write all sorts of things. And emails, so your, your social media posts. In fact, for our hub members, members of United Arts Base, there is a lesson in the hub all about how to use chat GPT to write statements and bios. So it's crazy. It's crazy. And then, of course, there's also AI for art. So now you can type into a, a computer system or a platform, you know, create me an artwork <laughs> and it will create the artwork. And so the same for music and um it's really, really interesting. And of course, it's raising lots and lots and lots of questions. And it is making some people nervous because now anyone can be a poet, anyone can be an artist, anyone can be an educator because they can just write a course with chat GPT. Anyone can just turn out an artwork now. And, and so it's very, really interesting how it's changing. And it's if you look back to the mid 19th century when photography came, um, there was 
you know, the same kind of fears and uproar that there is now in a way where people were really afraid of photography and especially in the art world because there was some fear around photography replacing artists and there was some debate around photography being mechanical and soulless and, you know, so all the same or not similar conversations were happening back then around photography as well and still do today there's still a debate isn't this in some areas around art versus photography and especially super realistic versus not and this is the great thing I think this is what brings us to this topic now around AI is that we are all so different each and every single one of us and some of us are going to really love this new technology and find it really exciting and embrace it like people did with photography uh, when it was invented and use it and think, wow, this is, this is changing the world. Like, how can I use this? So maybe back then people weren't going to be a photographer, but they were thinking, especially as artists, how can I use photography to en enhance my artwork or go alongside the process of making art? And I think in today's world now, there'll be people questioning the same. How can I use AI uh, to enhance my artwork or work alongside? Or maybe I will become an artist that just uses AI technology and move away from the traditional sense. And then there are some people that just can't get their heads around it. Like, no, no, there's no way I can sit and create an artwork that way. I have to feel my paint and I have to feel the clay and I want to get... Um, connected to the earth and um and so it's uh, the way I see it and this is this is my I live in a flower <laughs> and uh I I just like to accept and be open to different ways of working and find it quite exciting it's happening there's nothing we can do about it it's happening AI is here it's gonna stay and it's about really embracing that change and looking to other people that are using it and learning from them. And I think if we approach it in that way, it is exciting. And it doesn't mean that you have to take part in it. It doesn't mean you have to start creating AI. You don't have to even understand it if you don't want to. But it's acknowledging that it's there. And now it's another medium. It's another form of communication. And I think that's quite interesting how the art world will be revolutionized, like photography revolutionized, revolutionized the art world. Now this will. And it's going to be, I find that fascinating to see now where the art world will go, because we're, we're here in a moment of history. Like when you look back to other revolutionary periods of time, you know, we weren't living in it and we're living in this. So I feel like it's quite an exciting time to be alive where we're witnessing this development we're alive at this moment and we're in it we're experiencing it as that person of either resisting it being excited by it being afraid of it and so i think it's it's exciting personally um there have been thoughts and i know other people and friends i've spoken to that what does this mean now for the art world and what does this mean now that anyone can be an artist for me, I think that's great because I like, I'm an advocate for the arts. So I think if there's now a tool that helps people become more creative, amazing. Um, because for me, when I speak to the thousands of people that I've spoken to over the last 10 years of being in this industry, there are so many people who want to be creative, but they are terrified of traditional materials. They're terrified of paints. They're terrified of picking up a pencil. And sometimes it's because they did when they were younger and they were told that they were rubbish and they, they, just, they just have no confidence to use these tools and they're, they're afraid of them. And now they've got massive hangups about them. Or sometimes it's that perception that, you know, to pick up a pencil, I have to produce something incredible. And if I don't produce something incredible, then there's no point. I'm, I'm an embarrassment. I'm a failure. So I'm just not going to do it at all. I know and I've spoken to so many people that feel that way. So then they're just not creative. They're just stopping it. They're blocking it. So for me, I think if this does open up the gateway and introduce people to be creative and to create an artwork, 
then that's super. That's my view, because obviously I run United Hot Space and that's what I'm all about. And and I just see that as a positive thing, that that could really help people in terms of therapy, in terms of their creative outlet, in terms of zoning out and using something. Of course, I, you know, and I also think it's incredible to use traditional materials. I'll, I'm in that camp. <laughs> I struggle with digital art, but that's not to say there isn't a place for it. There is a place for it. There is, and it's there. And um, the other concern that I know people have is around the mass now and that already on social media, we're seeing a mass of artwork, a mass of artists, a mass of everything. It's not just in the art world, it's in every every area. And the the concern now is that, you know, if somebody wants an artwork, they can actually go and create it themselves. If people want an artwork, there might be now people that can just create artworks and 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 sell them at a, a much cheaper price. And what does this mean for me now as an artist, especially if you've established yourself or if you've just started out, you might be worrying. And I understand that it can be concerning. You know, I'm not going to lie. When it when I first heard about it, you do have these thoughts that cross your mind of what if this happens or what if that happens? What does this mean now? And I remember sitting there thinking, gosh, you know, I've spent years creating content for United Art Space. And I took it took me uh, at least a year to write my course it's taken me at least three years to write my book <laughs> and now someone can just write a book in that in an hour <laughs> using chat gpt um but that's just the way it is and what i know though is that more than ever right now more than ever and it's always been important is the person behind that creation and so there's always been a mass of artwork. And so let's take a popular genre. Let's take pet portraiture, where there's lots of pet portrait artists out there. And what makes you different to all the other pet portrait artists out there is you. It's simple. It's you. It's the way you hold your pencil. It's the way you see the world. It's the way you have experienced what you've experienced it's your story it's who you are and that's what sets you apart and that's what's going to set all the AI artists apart from each other because there'll be a mass of AI art and the same principles will still apply what sets you apart from those people is yourself so more than ever as well because of AI I believe we have machines now and robots and human connection is important more than ever. And the human behind the creation is more important than ever. And that's always been the case. But even more now we're living in this digital era, it is more prevalent. And so, again, I'm quite excited about this because this is what I've been teaching for years. Those in my community know that I'm all about the why, why do you do what you do and who are you? And that is the most important part in all of this. And so I've got some events coming up actually. Um, if you're what, listening to the replay or watching the replay, you'll have to just check in the comments below to see the dates because you might be watching this after the event, but we've got the Your Art Matters event coming up. And that is all about why you matter, why your art matters and getting you really confident about who you are because that is what makes you stand out against everyone else. And I really want you to feel excited about who you are and what you do. Because when you feel that, it just makes life better. Um, and then we've also got some other events coming up. There's another one coming up, which is Start Selling Your Art as well. And I'm very excited about that one. Um, but in all of this, it's about knowing that there's a place for everybody there's a place for ai there's a place for you you don't have to get involved in it if you don't want to it doesn't mean that your art isn't going to be relevant anymore it absolutely will because there's a place for everyone and if we can all learn from each other and learn from people that that embrace ai and be open to these changes and not be critical one thing that i do advocate is that 
is that judgment on other people that if someone chooses to, to create an artwork using AI, let's not be judgy and not be critical. It's like their choice. They've wanted to do that. It's just their decision. And of course, you can have an opinion on it. But I just think we just need to be open and just be open that it's not for me. But if it's for you, that's OK. <laughs> that's the stance that I like to take, um, especially because if you start worrying and concerning yourself with what, what other people are doing, if you go down the maze, if you go into the maze of oh gosh, look, this person's doing this and that's so annoying and why would they use that? It's, so, it's got no soul. Why, were, why wouldn't they just do something with watercolour? I just don't get it. It's just awful. And I get, you know, it's okay to have your own opinions, but the more you go into that rabbit hole of criticising and, and being judgmental of others, you're taking away from your own pathway um, so I think sometimes it's OK to have those thoughts. I'm not saying that you shouldn't have them, but just don't stay there too long is what I would say. And just acknowledge it that, oh, that it's making me feel uncomfortable, this. OK, let's get back to my own pathway, because you don't want to go down that rabbit hole. Just bring yourself back and just focus on yourself. That this is I'm sharing this because this is what I do. If I find myself going down the rabbit hole of being judgmental and going, oh, why, why would you do that? And, and I get defensive. I just stop and bring myself back and focus on my own pathway in my own flower. I put myself back in my flower, in my own world and carry on doing the way the things that I do, the way I do them and embrace my own pathway. Um, and so I, but I do think the more we can collaborate, it does create a more vibrant and exciting world. And that's the way we have to look at it. There's going to be a an influx now of art and different ways of making art and experimentation and exploration and a new media now and and we have to embrace that so if you want to get involved in AI and have an explore there are platforms out there I haven't used any of them I have to say but if you want to go and google you just I would google AI art creation tool um, though I will drop some links below this with some that I've heard of, but like I say, I've never used them, but they're there if you want to just go and explore and have a look or learn more about this topic. So there we go. Embracing artificial intelligence. <laughs> Who would have thought we'd be talking about this? If you'd have told me 10 years ago when I set all this up, I wouldn't have seen this coming. <laughs> have a wonderful, wonderful week, my friends. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.